All right, this is John Cole with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, we're going to juice off comparison against two very popular juicers. Well, one very popular juicer and one less popular juicer that you should be familiar about. Um, these are two entry-level juicers. And actually, this guy I literally took out of my luggage because it is my travel juicer that I travel with when I you know, travel by car or even by plane. I can take it through the TSA without any problems. I don't know that you could say the same for this one because it has a sharp blade on there. This has actually no blades and works more by crushing and squeezing. Anyways, let's go ahead and introduce both these machines. Today we, we have the Breville Juice Fountain Cold uh, Juicer here on this side. And over on this side we have the Shine Cold Press Juicer. Now, both these juicers have the word cold in their name. And, you know, I'm going to say that neither of these juicers heat the juice. Even though this is even a high-speed machine, high-speed juicers, no matter if it says cold in the title or not, does not necessarily heat the juice based on my testing. Although, a lot of the, in my opinion, propaganda on the Internet says that high-speed machines heat your juice up. That has not been my personal experience myself, and uh, I will prove that to you guys by testing the food we're juicing with a uh, thermometer infrared thermometer um, but that being said this does run at a high rpm this is known as a centrifugal ejection machine which i'll explain to you guys in a second but this runs at incredibly fast and high speed uh 6500 rpm up to 13,000 rpm that thing's really humming man that's faster than a lamborghini <laughs> even faster than some, some japanese crash rockets that run at like i don't know eight nine thousand rpm this goes 13,000 rpms with more RPMs, you get a lot more, basically, air into the juice. Like, if you're driving at a high speed down the freeway and you stick your arm out the window, it's going to go whoop in the back because it's going fast. But if you're going five miles an hour, stick your arm out, you can just feel the wind. It's kind of pleasant, right? So lots of air spinning around in this machine, which then aerates the juice. Um, and in my opinion, and based on some scientific studies we'll look at in a minute, um, actually lower the nutritional content of the juice of certain nutrients. All right? In addition, because of the high speed blade, it can massively damage, you know, the food, which I will talk about in a little bit. Anyways, over on this side, we have the Shine Cold Press Juicer, and this runs at a low and slow 40 revolutions per minute. I don't, so I don't know what's the difference between 13,000 or 40, right? Big, huge difference. This runs at a low and slow 40 RPMs, one of the slowest juices on the entire planet. And it's like, John. In a juicer is fast or better slow. I live in America. We think fast food is good. <laughs> and I want everything yesterday. And I want my one day shipping. <laughs> you know, and maybe in shipping, fast is good. And in, in, in junk food, fast is not good in my opinion. We actually want to eat slow food. And in juicers, fast. Er, it's got to get the X from me. We want to go with a slow juicer. Just because it's a lot more quiet on the ears. not going to wake people up in your house. And also, in my opinion, and based on scientific studies, I'll show you guys, will produce more nutrition in the end. Also, slow juicers are very much more effective at juicing certain produce types, such as one of the most important produce types you guys should be juicing in the world, the leafy greens, whether that's kale greens, collard greens, spinach greens, romaine lettuce greens, or even hemp greens, right? The greens are the most important food item that is under eaten that we need to eat more of and juicing makes it very simple and easy to get more greens in your diet. That's why I love juicing so much. Juicing can literally transform one whole pound of greens, right, into literally eight ounces or one cup of juice. So literally you could have the majority of the nutrition out of those greens in a cup in an easy to assimilate format that you would probably like to eat more than a pound of salad is just to have a little nice concentrated juice of greens and especially in this day and age when we're, there's so many concentrated toxins around us whether that's formaldehydes in different products in our houses or chemical sprays or perfumes right we want to maximize the nutrition so that gives our bodies everything that it may need to help us live and thrive in this modern world anyways what i want to do next for you guys is actually go ahead and explain the two juicers to you and actually how they work because they are although they're both juicers they're quite different kind of like if you're a lady you guys will get this analogy the difference between a high heel shoe and a running shoe you know that those those are both shoes but they're totally different right you're never going to use your high heel shoes to go run around a, a baseball track or whatever like that right 
and you'd never use maybe some tennis shoes at like a nice high-end wedding, all right? So that's my, my girl analogy, what's my guy analogy? I don't know, I don't have one. Let's get into these juicers, all right? So we'll start first with a Breville juice fountain cold. This very, machine is very popular, actually. Breville has one of the best-selling juicers on the planet, you know, and they've done a good job of marketing. <laughs> that being said, um, you know, I just like to tell like it is and share with you guys my experiences. You know, when I got into juicing now on a regular, consistent basis, which is now over 25 years ago or tw 24 years ago, um, I was using a high-speed juicer like this. So this is like, in my opinion, very old technology, right? Do you guys use iPhones from 25 years ago? They didn't even have iPhones 25 years ago, right? And now everybody has an iPhone 11 with three cameras in the front. I saw one the other day. It was insane. Um, but anyways, as you guys know, technology gets better, and as like, technology improves, you know, things get left behind. You know, nobody's using standard smart or standard dumb phones that look like the Motorola brick, if you guys remember what that is. Nobody uses those anymore. Everybody has a smartphone. And likewise, you know, juicers of old design, while they still have some benefits, like the Motorola smartphone can still call 911 if you need to make an emergency call, even without cell service. Um, these juicers will produce juice, and they have some benefits over the new models, actually. So, uh, the main benefit over this is that it is fast. This is the fastest juicer in the West. If you have zero time, and you have no time, and you shouldn't be juicing, you could probably use this juice because you could throw a couple things in there and have a whole glass of 16 ounces of juice before you could say, whatchamacallit. <laughs> and so that's, that's really what I like about these machines. The cleaning time actually may be on par or even more with some modern slow juices of today as a nice a good slow juicer known as the Omega NC800 it takes me 80 seconds to clean and this guy will take me longer because of the massive screen area inside. In addition this also runs at a high RPM and which means it's going to be louder. It has been described to me by one of my customers as an airplane taking off in my kitchen because it's so loud. I mean it literally sounds like that. Um, and also, as, as I said, it's not effective with juicing things like leafy greens, even fruits. It'll juice fruits fairly well, but it kicks out a lot of pulp that you guys will see in the demo that I'll be doing in just a little bit. Um, it juices fruits, but it leaves the pulp very wet. On the flip side, if you're juicing something like carrots or beets, right, the high-speed machine is actually a very effective means of juicing hard root vegetables, right? It works very well, and in, in many cases, actually even better than a slow juicer, depending on the slow juicer type. So auger-style machines don't do as well when ju as, as a high-speed machine juicing carrots, but on the flip side, a, a low-speed machine, such as this slow juicer, or most slow juicers, actually all slow juicers, will juice leafy greens more effectively than the high-speed machine that may kick out even whole chunks of leafy greens. Anyways, let's find out why this is so. So, number one, I mean, another thing people really like is a wide feature. People are lazy, they don't want to cut their produce up, and this, this juicer has a three-inch wide feature, which means you could put literally smaller diameter apples in here whole, you could put a whole piece of carrots, and you could shove a whole bunch of leafy greens right down in the chute, and you gotta press it down with the pusher, and it goes right in the machine and gets juiced right up. And how this specifically works is they have this high speed shredding disc, which actually is sharp. So you do not want to run your fingers against these little pricks here or these little razor blades in the middle. You may cut yourself. And this is why the TSA may not allow you to take this on the plane because this can be used as a weapon because it is sharp actually. And what happens as you put the produce in, it is micro shredded. So something like a leaf, if you put a single leaf in here, it, the leaf, th there's so much air running around in here, you might put a leaf in and literally it's just going to get kicked out without getting micro shredded. If it doesn't get micro shredded, then there's no juice coming out. Something like an apple that's really soft, right? It's soft and juicy. As soon as they break it open, all the juice starts to fling out, but then so does the pulp and you get some fairly wet pulp. That's why they have a low speed setting on this so that you don't get that flinging out effect as quick so you may get a little bit more yield. But on something like a carrot, right, this machine is literally designed from the ground up to juice something like carrots or beets or other root vegetables. It grinds it up. Carrots are not full of super, lots of water. Um, and then the water and the shreds come out. The, the water basically gets flung through the screen through centrifugal action, and it comes out. At the same time, it's actually getting aerated a lot. And the pulp is then kicked out the back of the machine. And that's basically what this is doing this little uh, trough. I like this actually. This is a nice cool piece. Nice and clear. BPA free. 
um, put that in there and you guys can see as the juice comes out it's going to spring out into here and the juice is going to come out the spout and then all the waste product is uh, going to then uh, come out the back of the machine out into a pulp catch cup. Now this is moving very fast and if everything is not properly sealed you may get you know sprays of produce on your walls on your counter so this machine also can be messy which is a negative but once again the positive is it's gonna be fast but also a big negative for me because I got into juicing for my health is this will reduce some of the nutrients in the juice that you're making. In addition as I mentioned this machine is also quite loud. We're going to be doing a sound test in just a minute here uh, to let you guys know how loud this machine actually is. And then to assemble this, just put it right in, lock stand in place, this goes in, and then we got to latch this arm, arm top on, and we put the pusher in, and we're ready to go. On this machine, you definitely want to use a pusher to push things in. Um, it is a high speed, fast running blade, and if you have children, you will want to supervise them with this machine because literally, you could get your arm in here and or your hand in there. You should never put anything in the juicer other than the pusher or the produce you're juicing. Don't put chopsticks, don't put a knife, don't put a fork, don't put your dog's paw, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Anyways, over on the shine, whole different story. This does not run at a high speed, runs at 40 RPMs. You know, one of the negatives of this machine is the small feed chute. If you consider that a negative, it depends on how you look at it. It does mean you will have to cut your produce smaller because it's literally a fraction of the size of the three inch wide breville. But at the same time, that also means it's a benefit uh, because you're gonna get to basically not flood the juicer with too much food at once. If you put too much food in the juicer at once, you're gonna reduce your yield because some of that yield is being lost in the pulp. With this, you're, it's gonna be pretty hard to overfeed the machine if you're just using my technique where I do not recommend even using a pusher in this style machine. I recommend not using the pusher in this machine and letting gravity basically take in the produce, which saves you a step of actually having to push each item in. That could save you a little time, although this machine is still be way faster. All right, so small feed chute. Uh, all these parts are also BPA free if you are concerned about that. Uh, next, going into this machine, um, you have a single auger. So this auger is a G Ultim and it's eight times harder plastic than plastic used on previous auger juicers. And as you put the produce in here, literally it comes and takes a bite off of the produce and this auger spins around and it basically reduces the space, reduces the space in which the produce is in there. So literally it crushes and squeezes the produce, much like if you had an orange and you put it in your hand, you squeezed it, you could probably squeeze the juice out of an orange. That's what literally this machine is doing, you know, whereas this one's using that high speed blade to fractionate the produce. And if you look under a scanning electron microscope, the cell walls that have come out of the juice out of this machine versus this machine, you know, the cell walls of the juice of this machine are really mangled and damaged. And in this machine, they're, they look a lot nicer. So kind of imagine this analogy, which is what I'd like to give. Say you're throwing away a paper. That's kind of important, but not super important. Uh, you know, this machine is like putting it through like an NSA, like high-end micro shredder that basically shreds it into a million pieces. And then once you're like halfway shredding that paper, you think, oh my gosh, I'm not supposed to shred that. I need to save that for tax purposes, right? <laughs> but then you're screwed because it's micro shredded. You basically lost the information. And in my opinion, this shredder kind of does the same thing. Whereas this one is more like taking that paper and crumbling it up and then throwing it in your waste basket basket hopefully you made the two-point shot and then if you need it you can actually take it out and uncrumple it and it's going to be fine right so this does a lot less damage anyways uh, once the produce is squished and smushed uh, then as it's smushed the juice comes out so the juice then falls out the stage uh, one and stage two of the juicing screen and then the pulp is ejected out this small hole in the bottom which then actually has to take a right hand turn in here and then comes out this side at a low and slow steady pace <laughs> unlike the high speed kind of more chaotic pace on the Breville. Now there is a little black plug here that you guys can see that I'm moving. Uh, this is very important to remove this when you're cleaning to make sure all the passageways are clear but when you're done cleaning you want to basically put it back in you want to keep it in there for juicing. This is very important this will keep a small level of back pressure on the pulp as it's being juiced to make sure it's going to be fully wrung out and you're going to get the highest yield. 
At the same time the pulp is coming out here, the juice is then coming out this spout cap, which you can shut off the flow so you don't get drips on your can or something that Breville does not have, which I think they should. Um, you could basically just uh, close this up to stop the drips on your counter and the juice is going to you know, flow out at a slow and steady rate instead of a fast, once again, a chaotic rate. And you know, on some kind of energetic level, I also believe this may negatively impact the juice. All right. So uh, assembly this machine, not super difficult, not super hard. We're just going to take the top, uh, put it on, then we're going to take the uh, juicing screen and we just have to line that up and it drops in a place, kind of like so. And then we're going to take the auger, and the auger drops right in. Once we got the auger in, then we're going to take the top, the top locks in place, and then we can uh, close this all up, and we're all set and ready to juice. Um, so yeah, that's both the machines. Um, this one will definitely save you time. It also is a little bit louder, so let's go ahead and for you guys right now do a sound test. So we have my decibel meter here, and I think the ambient room temp room sound without me talking is looks like 20 to me. So now let's go ahead and test the Breville to share with you guys how loud it is. I'm going to be holding it this direction, then I'll turn it to you, and I don't think you guys will be able to see that. So we went to 20 all the way up to 88, 89 decibels. So that's like a difference of, I don't know, 70 decibels. So that's actually fairly significant. Now let's go ahead and turn on the shine. Now once again, we started at 20. And I'm seeing about 68, 69. So, you know, that's, uh, you know, much more quiet, um, like that's like about a 40, a 50 decibel increase, actually. Um, you know, so that's a significant 20 decibels louder. So if you're noise sensitive, definitely this is the one you want to get. And, you know, once again, in all my juicing comparison videos, there's pros and there's cons to each machine. And I make these one these videos so you guys could know what they are and then you can make the best decision for you. You know, I'll tell you straight up that I'm not a fan of the high speed machines anymore if they're learning about the low speed machines and I would never buy a high speed machine. But you know, I'll, here's the thing, I would rather have you juice in a high speed machine than not juice at all, right? Juicing is one of the best things you could do for your health. It's It literally turned around my health, turned around my life. It was a first step in me making other dietary and health changes in my life so that I could be healthier than ever. And I want you guys to get into it, but if you have the time, you have the inkling, and even you'll save some money actually. This machine is $30 less than the uh, Juice Fountain Cold Juicer. Um, yeah, so I would really encourage you guys to do the slow juicing, but once again, fast juicer, better than nothing. And maybe if you're going to juice nothing but carrots and beets all day, this machine will get a higher yield, but it's going to be lower nutrition. So let's learn more about that next. So now I'm going to share with you guys actually some more information about the nutrition quality of the juices produced in each of these machines. Whether you got a slow juicer or a high speed machine. They have done testing, and this is journal published scientific studies. Um, two different ones that I'll be highlighting today. Uh, one is from, they're both from the Food Science Biotechnology Journal, I believe, and one is dated, um, published February 28, 2015, and one is published um, July 12, 2017. So the first one is, from 2014, is Quality Evaluation of Fresh Tomato Juice Prepared Using High Speed Centrifugal Ejection Juicer and low speed masticating household juicer. They didn't use these particular two juicers, but results will be similar in my opinion because the technology is the same in both models. Anyways, uh, they, they juiced the tomatoes in, in both machines and then they basically measured certain parameters. So let's go ahead and uh, I could show you guys, I'll put a link down below to this uh, study, but there's a little uh, table here that goes over the differences. So, uh, Basically, the total polyphenols in the low speed masticating was 49.0 and the high speed was 
The vitamin C content according to the study was 15.3 in the low speed and in the high speed it was 13.6. And, uh, and then the lycopene was 3.02 in the low speed or 2.20 in the high speed. So, you know, there's not a whole lot of difference, but once again, these small little differences can give your body the extra advantage it needs. And I'm going to go ahead and read the abstract here. Uh, the aim of this study was to evaluate, uh, evaluate and compare the physiochemical, nutritional, and sensory properties of homemade fresh tomato juices prepared using two types of household juicers, a high-speed centrifugal juicer and a low-speed masticating juicer. Juice yield soluble solids and the contents of total polyphenol, vitamin C, and lycopene in LSM, um, which is low-speed low masticating tomato juices, were significantly higher than those in HSC tomato juice. The DPPH radical scavenging activity of the LSM tomato juice was also higher than that of the high-speed uh, tomato juice, high speed tomato juice, easily separated into two layers with many fine bubbles while LSM, the slow speed juice, was homogenous. Sensory evaluation revealed that panels significantly preferred low speed juice to high speed juice. In conclusion, the low speed juicer shows several advantages over the high speed juicer for preparing tomato juice of superior quality and taste that is rich in antioxidant and phytochemical at a high yield. So yeah, that's what they basically came out with in this study here. Once again, link is down below in the description if you guys want to uh, read that or look at it more. Uh, next uh, test is actually antioxidant activity of fresh grape juices prepared using various household processing methods. And in this actually, I think they even used uh, a blender here. And so you could see some of the different graphs on the back. And basically the uh, low speed juicer had uh, maybe 300, over 300 different polyphenols um, according to the test and the high speed centrifugal maybe had under a hundred so this is showing significantly different you know than the test on tomatoes like it, it significantly lowered like three times lower on the polyphenol content when juicing grapes in both these machines. Total flavonoids on the um, low speed machine was, I'm going to say it's like 55 and on the high speed it was like 20 so that's almost two to two and a half, three times difference. The anthocyanin content, wow this one blows my mind. Anthocyanins are so important for our health in my opinion based on other studies I've seen on laboratory um, you know, rodents which I do not agree with. But the low speed machine made like 35 and the high speed on anthocyanin content it was like three. That's like ten times more nutritious in the anthocyanins, right? This is when you juice purple grapes, you're gonna get that purple rich color if you're juicing something like red cabbage that may have some anthocyanins in there. If you're juicing like the red beets that has like a betalanes in there. If you're juicing purple carrots, which are my favorite things to juice, lots more anthocyanins in there that you will extract out ten times more according to this study with a slow speed machine. Vitamin C content was 0.8 in a low speed machine and more like 0.17 or 1.9 on a high speed machine. So once again, that's like, you know, four times higher. I mean, that's not a lot of vitamin C as it is. But uh, nonetheless, right, once again, you know, I want you guys to do things that are advantageous to you all. And, you know, of course, eating more fruits and vegetables are more advantageous. But even choosing the, a different juicer could give you advantages and this can be especially important if you're trying to lose weight or overcome a disease or build up your immune system, right? These small little incremental differences by juicing the same produce to get more nutrition can be quite beneficial in my opinion. So what I'm going to juice for you guys next today is we're going to be juicing some of my favorite fruits, the cactus fruits that we'll bring out in a second. And once again, today I'm going to show how to juice fruits because I don't think I've ever actually juiced cactus fruits in a high speed machine. Actually, I kind of, I kind of know in my head what's going to happen, but I don't really want to do it. But I want to do this video to show you guys. I have previously used this machine to make uh, cactus fruit juice, which is actually, this is probably one of the best juices I've tested for straight cactus fruit juice um, so far. And so I'll give you guys that. And but this is fruit, so like this is this is in general for fruits. Like I would always say, this machine is way better, you know, than that machine for fruits. If you want to get you know a, a more delicious tasting fruit juice, um, in some cases this will make a more pulpy juice. So then you might want to use this machine if you have some soft mealy apples 
they're going to juice better in this machine because this juice is going to be a lot more fine, but you're also going to get a lot of wastage that's really wet pulp. Whereas this machine um, is going to make a lot more like thick juice, more like, a, you know, a Kern's nectar, you know, you might have had in a can when you were a kid, like with some fiber in there. But you could always use a sieve to strain that out if it is not desired. On carrots, once again, carrots, this machine is going to get a higher yield overall, but this machine, based on the studies and from what I believe, will make a higher nutrition content, even though this one is making a higher yield. And then on something like um, the leafy green vegetables, this machine is going to really dominate because it's really going to crush and squeeze out and extract the juice and the chlorophyll, all the different nutrients out of the greens, whereas this one, it's going to pretty much just shred your greens and you might as well use those same greens in a salad because they barely extracted any juice out of it. And you know, these are just how these machines react to these different produce items. And of course, the main advantage, can't complain, this guy is super quick. Oh, another disadvantage the Breville has, actually, uh, all the high-speed Breville juicers have only a one-year warranty, which in my opinion is really short. You know, I want you guys to be juicers for life. That's why I really advocate juicer, buying a juicer that has a long warranty. Some juicers that we sell at Discount Juicers have a 15-year, 10-year warranty. Uh, this machine it is an entry-level machine, does have a three-year warranty, but if you want the big daddy of this machine, it is a Slow Star juicer made also by Trivest, the same company that brings you the shine that has a 10-year warranty. But that machine also will cost you a little bit more money. All right, so now we're all ready to juice, and I want to explain to you guys what we'll be juicing today. We'll be juicing one of my favorite fruits of the world, the cactus fruit, also known as the tunas. Um, this may be available at like some specialty grocery stores near you. But honestly, the best place to get these guys is at a local Hispanic or Mexican supermarket. Um, you're going to find these probably without any problems. Um, some better grocery stores that have exotic fruit sections may have the purple ones. You may rarely ever see these uh, green style ones. And these could run at, even at like Whole Foods. I've seen these for like $2.99 a pound. But I got these wholesale like $0.50 cents a pound. And at, an Asia, at a Mexican market today in town, I saw them three for a dollar. Usually if you want to get them for a really good price, I see them on sale sometimes for five or six for a dollar, but that's pretty rare. But expect usually like three to four for a dollar, which is a good solid price. Two to nine a pound is kind of interesting, but I would not go for it. And uh, especially these red colored fruits are very high nutrient um, density, have a very high nutrient density because of the different beta lanes and uh, phytochemicals and antioxidants in there. So I would encourage you guys to juice a wide variety of things. Uh, one of the things, you guys can eat this fruit. The challenge is with this fruit, it has lots of seeds. It's probably one of the most seediest, food, seediest fruits that I'm aware of, aside from maybe guavas that are also really seedy. This has a lots of seeds. And you can eat the seeds and swallow them. Most people don't like to prefer, prefer to do that. They'll probably just go right through you and fertilize a cactus plant when the seeds sprout on the other end. Um, but I like to remove the seeds through uh, the juicing common Commonly, this would actually be blended in a blender, but then you're oxidizing some of the nutrients, and then it is strained out. So I like this slow juicer because it's going to preserve more of the nutrition and also make a higher quality, better tasting juice, as you guys will see. Anyways, uh, to juice these guys, you need to prepare them properly. I do not recommend or encourage you guys to juice them with the skin on. You will need to cut that off, in my opinion. And so you just got a knife here. We're just going to cut off either end. Cut one end off. Cut the other end off, and then you can see it's just cut top and bottom. And then we're just going to take the knife and we're going to just slice from top to bottom once again and put a nice line in it. And then we're just going to go ahead and kind of stick the knife in there and kind of get it going. And now it basically just simply peels off, much like a candy coming out of a candy wrapper. <laughs> so then you'll have the uh, peeled fruit that is now ready to do the same thing on the green one. We're just going to go ahead and cut off the top. Cut off the bottom, make an incision from bottom to top. Just, just have to go in a little bit, maybe eighth of an inch, and then just get it started to peel it back, and then basically you peel this right off. I will give you guys a warning that I really got sick once on wild harvested cactus fruit that I did not wash, and I used the skin and all. And so I do not recommend, uh, you know, processing the skin. It may have contaminants and or some kind of toxins um, some of these cactus fruits too may also have small little glockids or like little not they're like they're kind of like thorns but they're not they're different and those are the things that get stuck in your skin like a really bad splinter 
and they're not fun. So sometimes at the grocery store, they'll have actually tongs to pick these out. I never worry about the tongs. Uh, most of the commercial fruit you buy um, have actually already been deglocked. Deglocked. Have been, the glockets removed. All right. So anyways, this is what the fruit looks like. We're going to come back at you with two even amounts of fruits. We're going to do the weigh-in, and then we're going to get to juicing in the fast and slow juicer. All right, so now we're all ready and set up to juice, and we have uh, the even amounts of cactus fruit, both the green style and the red style, on the scales, and now we're going to do the weigh-in to make sure we have a fair fight. Let's go ahead and give you guys a close-up on the scales over on the Breville side. Looks like we have 1,431 all the cactus fruit and over on the shine juicer side once again looks like we have 1431 for all that delicious cactus fruit let's go ahead and do a close-up both scales 1431 so you guys can see it is a fair fight and let's get ready to juice now that we have the weigh-in done let's go ahead and remove the scales from the table and also reveal our stopwatch timer so i will be actually stop watching or timing how long it takes to juice i'll be juicing in the breville uh, cold first and the other thing I want to do since it is called cold and this is shine cold press juicer we have my infrared thermometer right here so we're gonna go ahead and spec out the fruit the fruit is at 58.5 degrees this one's at 59.5 this one's at 59 even <laughs> all right so like let's just go with the 58 59 degrees I want you guys to remember that uh, so we're checking the fruit now, and we're going to check the juice afterwards to see if there's temperature rise or decrease in the fruit. Once again, starting out at uh, 58 degrees, if you guys can see that on the screen there. Also, we're going to time this, and we're going to use the Breville in the low speed mode. That's at 6,500 RPM, which is better for fruits and leafy greens, whereas the high speed mode, 13,000, uh, should be used for things like root vegetables. All right, so let's go ahead and crank this uh, to on, and we're going to hit the start button. And just uh, put the fruit in there one at a time. That was the last fruit in the Breville. As you guys can saw, that happened really fast. Hit the stop. Um, that basically took us about a minute to juice all the fruit in the Breville. It's still running and some of the juice is still being extracted. As you guys can see, we actually have a nice, really solid, big foam layer on there. And the juice is, uh, you know, probably a little bit aerated. Let's go ahead and turn this machine off. Let that uh, cool down. <laughs> And let's go ahead and measure the juice here. So we started at like 58, 59 degrees. Now we're reading a solid 60 degrees, 60.5. So we had like a one to two degree. Oh, we're reading 61 now. <laughs> so anyways, we had from 58 to 60 or 61. So, or 59 to 61, two degree, two to three degree uh, increase. Yeah, it's reading 61 now. I don't know if you guys could see that on the thermometer there. So yeah, it, it heated up the juice. It's not totally cold, man. I'm gonna sue them. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, 58 or 59 to 61, that's not significant in my opinion, all right? Next, let's go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and juice in the shine juicer. Uh, we will need to pre-cut uh, some of the produce and we will count that in the time as it is going. It's only fair. So let's go ahead and uh, situate all this here so you guys can see it. So again, we're going to get our temperature of the fruit. Once again, this fruit is about at 58 degrees, 57 degrees, 57.5, 58, 
58, we'll just go at 58. So 58 to 61, this is starting at 58. We're gonna turn this machine on. This is much more quiet. We're gonna hit the start, and we're gonna probably have to cut each fruit in half to get it to juice and to shine. And then we're just gonna drop it in, nice and slow process. Uh, this one did splash a little bit as I was juicing. And so uh, one simple and easy cut, and that's the thing I like about the shine, literally, you know, you don't need to use the pusher. If you didn't use the pusher on this, you get a lot of overspray and splash on the shine. That just really doesn't happen. And uh, so what I want to do for you guys is save you guys some time, is we're just going to go ahead and take one fruit at a time, cut it in half, <laughs> and drop it in and let the machine process it as it needs to. And we're going to come back at you uh, pretty much when I'm all done. Alright, so we're down to the last fruit on the shine here. We got one left. This is the second to the last one going in. This has worked really easily, really nice and mellow, a lot more calming on the sole because this one's running at high speed and it's going to splash if you don't put that pusher in. This one I just cut it in half simply and just uh, drop it right in. It juices right up without me having to push in or do anything. Now we got the last fruit going in. And uh, once you put the last fruit in, you don't want to just turn the machine off, unlike this machine that it basically spits out the juice and it's pretty much done. This machine does take a little bit more time to process that last fruit after you put it in there. You know, you'll know because the juice is still coming out. If you put the last fruit in and turn it off, you're going to be left with a lot of unjuiced fruits or vegetables in the juicer itself. How you'll be able to tell when it's done is that the pulp will stop ejecting and the juice will pretty much stop coming out. It might drip a little bit and we might get, you know, tip it forward a little bit to get a few more drips out. But I think for all practical purposes, we are done and we're gonna hit the stop. Oops, and I hit the reset, not the stop. But anyways, I think I saw it, it was about three minutes or so. So it took about three times longer uh, than this machine. Let's go ahead and tip this machine up a little bit if we have any more juice. And we do not. And on the Breville with this little spout thing, I would encourage you guys to just spin this upright so that you don't get any drips on your counters. Let's go ahead and turn this off. And I want to compare the juices for you guys so you guys can see the differences. But before I do, i got to make sure I do a temperature test on this side. So this temperature test is 61, 60.5. I guess we got a holding at 60.5. Uh, you guys can see it on there. And then uh, this juice has been sitting a little bit. Wow, this juice is at 62, 61.5. Yeah, so I mean approximately the same. So, I mean, they're both cold juicers and, you know, cold is only one thing, but I, what I really want you guys to look at is I want you guys to look at all the aeration on this one that is simply not on this one. I mean, there's a little bit of air bubbles on this, but there are some significant air bubbles, if you guys can see that, on the Breville side. Let's go ahead and do a close-up for you guys on the juice to show with you guys the different, the colors of the juice as well as all the air bubbles and find out which juicer actually made more juice. All right, let's go ahead and give you guys a close up on the juices. First, over on the Breville side, I don't know if you guys can see that on there, but it's basically at 500 milliliters plus another line. Um, that's about 600, maybe 602. And then you guys can see all that foam. I mean, that is a good solid one, two, three, maybe 300 milliliters of foam and then uh, looking at it on the top, I mean, that's all the foam created on there. Although I will say the juice is actually fairly dark, right? I, I kind of like that the juice is fairly dark. Um, over on the shine side, different story. I mean, if we just back up, you guys could see, look at that. That's a notable increase. I mean, if you add the foam up, then it might have made a little bit less than the shine. But without the foam, the shine made literally um, 1,000... Uh, milliliters of juice so that's you know I don't know what 40 a, a lot more you know not quite double double would be like 1200 but it made a thousand that's a lot more juice juicing fruits so I mean that's what that's the difference is you're gonna get you know like a lot more air bubbles and less qu quantity and uh, more quantity and here's the top of the juice on here and uh, definitely less air bubbles. You might see a few air bubbles on the top, you know, that's just going to happen. But this one is just solid air bubbles. And that may affect the drinkability of the juice, right? If there's more air bubbles in the juice or on top of the juice, that means you're going to be drinking that. 
and that may give you more uh, gas, belt belching, bloating, and uh, indigestion from the juice. All right, so we just did an objective test where we actually measured the actual yield that each juicer made along with the air bubbles. Now I'm gonna do a subjective, which is my tasting the juice. And here's the juice on the breville. If we pour it, look at that, that's nice thin juice, right? Not a lot of fiber in there. It's almost kind of like, um, just like that apple juice in the store that's unfiltered, right? It's like highly filtered. You know, in my opinion, you're gonna lose some nutrition by making a juice in this manner because you're losing some of the uh, insoluble fiber. You know, there's soluble fiber in the juice, but insoluble fiber, and the cactus fruits is actually rich in soluble fiber because it's actually such a ri rich and kind of gelatinous kind of juice. You're missing that in the breville, which some of you guys might prefer a thinner juice, <laughs> but let's try this because I haven't ever juiced cactus fruits that I could remember <laughs> in a high speed machine. Wow. I gotta say that's a new experience for me because normally my cactus fruit juice is nice and thick. You know, to me this kind of tastes flat. It's sweet because the cactus fruit is sweet. Mostly the green ones are generally sweeter than the reds, but the reds can be sweeter. But the red ones are way more nutritious. Yeah, I'd say that's a really thin juice, kind of like drinking a coffee. You know, there's nothing in a coffee. You know, it's nice and fine, and uh, yeah, it's decent. And let's go ahead and pour this one. And I'm, I don't know if you guys can see as you pour it, this one's a lot more viscous or thick, right? And to me, that means you're going to get more of those beneficial properties, the gels and the pectins or whatever else is in there, you know, of the juice. But it's a lot more thick, too, so let's go ahead and taste it. Mmm. Wow. So i got to say, actually... Because of all the extra fiber, and you can see it collecting on the glass there, the juice is actually not as sweet. We use the same exact cactus fruits from the same batch, and this one is actually not as sweet because it's now being diluted with all that the fiber and all the insoluble fiber as well as the soluble fiber that's in there. So this is quite interesting. This is how I normally drink the juice and how I'm used to drinking it. To me, this is more like a... Have you ever had a Kern's Nectar, like Kern's Guava Nectar? I used to have that as a kid, like in the can. I think now they're in a Tetra Pack. Um, but yeah, that, this is kind of like more like a nectar. Mm. So I'll leave you guys to your own devices as to which one you might prefer, if you want a thinner juice or you want a thicker juice. And the other thing I want to remind you guys, if you guys want a thinner juice, right, you can just take this juice and pour it through a finer sieve to straighten out all that extra fiber uh, that this juicer has already taken out because of the micro mesh strainer or sieve strainer actually in the juicer itself, right? And actually that's the next thing I want to point out is let's take a look at the pulp. So let's see, let's go ahead and uh, the pulp on the shine juicer, I mean this is what it looks like, right? I mean you could really see the basically that this this was just literally pressed out. These are all the seeds in there if I take and squeeze this, I could squeeze this through my hands, I'm squeezing the pulp, but I can't, I'm not able to really squeeze any more juice out because the juicer was effective at basically doing this task, right? And that's a, that's a pulp from the shine. Next, let's go ahead and take the pulp from the breville. Alright, so here's the pulp for the breville. Watch this. There's juice in there! And now look at that, that's sloppy seconds! Wow. So, I mean, you, can you guys see the difference on that? I mean, I could notably see the difference. Like, this is pretty dry pulp, right? There's no juice that's gonna pour out on this. I mean, it's literally pouring juice, it's totally liquid. That's totally insane. This is just how much more efficient a slow juicer is in this case, when juicing the cactus fruits and also on, on potentially other leafy green vegetables and other fruits on, you know, root vegetables in general, this style machine is going to do a little bit better than this one. Just for kickers, <laughs> what I want to do next is actually we're going to go ahead and put a measuring cup underneath the shine juicer and we're going to rejuice all this wet pulp. I mean, I, I cannot throw this out. I mean, it is still so wet. 
And that's what happens with a high speed machine because there's blade contact time and then instantly that pulp is kicked out and this really hurts yield on fruits and leafy greens. Uh, not so much on the carrots as I said because that's actually more optimally designed to do the carrots. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, pour this pulp through. That's another cool thing about these slow juicers. If you put this pulp through the breville again, oh my god, you're going to make such a mess. But even putting this uh, pulp that's been ground up through the shine juicer, it's, it, I mean, it loves it. I mean, it's still kicking out all the fiber. It's taking those nice hard seeds, separating those out so that you don't have to deal with them. I'm pouring this at a nice slow and moderate pace, not to like jam it all up at once. And frankly, I mean, this is how you would make nut milk in a slow juice. You would basically grind up or blend up your nuts and your water and then pour it through just like I'm doing here. And then the juicer will basically be your nut milk bag for you so that you don't have to, right? And I think we got a little bit of left in there going right in. And so now we basically rejuice the pulp from the Breville to see how much more yield we're going to get because, you know, as you saw, the difference in yield was about 400 milliliters uh, between the shine originally that came out and the Breville over on this side. How many more milliliters are coming out? Well, I don't know. The machine is still working. It's still pressing out the pulp from the Breville. This is how much more efficient this vertical slow juicer is and I can't speak for all vertical slow juices, but this is a good solid unit uh, by Shine that I've been selling for a while. And once again, this is my personal unit that actually came out of my luggage <laughs> that I take when traveling. Now, I do want to let you guys know that the juice coming out is fairly thick, but you know, that's once again, more fiber for you, which is really nutritious, and in my opinion, delicious, right? And we're just separating out those seeds, which, in my opinion, are no fun to eat. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, let this machine work a little bit, and then we're gonna see how much extra juice we made. All right, so I think the shine is done doing what it's gonna do. We're just getting some final drips. We're gonna go ahead and turn that off. I did tip this up already to make sure we got all the juice out. We're gonna put the spout cap down, and let me go ahead and show you guys what we made. So literally, we made another 300 milliliters of juice. And you know, really there was a 400 milliliter difference, so the, sh the shine was able to pull out an extra 300 milliliters, leaving only 100 extra milliliters unaccounted for, which would probably be some of the wet pulp in here, or the, the machine was not as effective to pull out the rejuice pulp, so it's always better to juice the stuff whole the first time, in my opinion, in the right juicer. And uh, let's go ahead and test this uh, juice here, and uh, we'll pour it for you guys. Once again, this is a nice thick juice. Unlike the bubble juice, which is nice and thin. Mm. As I suspected, this juice is actually not as sweet as the shine juicer because a lot of the sweetness was pulled out in, into the watery juice there. It's actually nice and thick. It's actually thicker than the original shine juice. And actually, I kind of like it the best, actually. <laughs> but I don't think I'll go through this just to get this uh, more thick, rich less sweet juice. Um, I'm just going to use the shine in the first place because it's going to make more yield, a higher quality juice as proved by those scientific studies with more antioxidants in there. It made a higher yield. It's also a lot less messy, not having all these splashings and things. And this machine is going to be a little bit easier to clean. Actually, talking about cleaning, I want to show you guys how easy the shine juicer is to clean. So uh, basically, we did just rejuice that pulp. Um, so if you take this machine apart, you're going to see we have one part here to clean. And the next two parts we have to clean uh, simply are the uh, juicing screen, which is now impacted with pulp, and the auger, which is actually fairly clean. You may have a little bit underneath the auger, and that's totally fine. So that's one, two, three parts so far. And then you have the main body that's four parts to clean on the shine. Over on the uh, Breville side, because once again, we did not use a pusher. On the Breville side, we have to clean the pusher. And this has like some nice little ridges and gaps and things you have to brush out. Uh, we have this top that actually is, you know, has lots of uh, pulp in there and just some nooks and crannies that we're going to have to get into to clean out. So that's two pieces. Uh, we then have <laughs> the strainer basket. That's the three pieces. <laughs> And then, of course, we have the uh, the main juicing bowl 
that still has a little bit of juice in there that will pour out. <laughs> so pretty much uh, four pieces. Let's see, which one would I rather clean? I mean, I kind of like the, the, the neatness of the shine, although I, I'd say probably in cleaning time, these are probably both fairly a wash, depending on what you're juicing. Um, you know, this screen can get more impacted with pulp um, than with fruit, like say you're juicing like carrots or beets, they may get kind of ground into the small holes of the screen, which smaller holes on a screen are be harder to clean than the larger holes on the shine juicer, um, in my opinion and based on my experience, all right? So wow, today we have a mess, but we also have uh, nearly uh, 200 um, milliliters or you know uh, two liters of the delicious cactus fruit juice that I'll get to uh, enjoy over the next few days. And uh, in the end of all my juice off videos, I have to declare a winner of this juice off. So who am I going to declare? I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to declare my favorite, the slow juicer, the shine juicer, my travel juicer as the winner. Why? Number one, as proven by science, gets a higher levels of nutrition that can help you regain your health, help you lose weight, help you do and meet the goals you want to meet. Uh, number two, it made more yield in this situation. It made 300 more milliliters of juice. It also made a lot less foam. It made a more thick and rich and to me, more delicious juice that is actually not quite as sweet because all that extra fiber diluted that, which is also going to blunt that sugar absorption because you do have more fiber in the juice when, with, than, than with this machine that takes it all out. And yeah, this was more efficient, also more quiet, less messy, and about the same to clean. And also to boot, it has a longer warranty, three years instead of one year on this machine, and it's also $30 less. So I don't know, I'm convinced myself that I'm going to continue with using my slow juicers because they get higher yields like on fruits in this situation, they create a higher quality juice and that's just the way you should go. You know, most department stores will sell high speed machines like the Breville, but probably of lower quality that may not even get as much yield, may, may, may waste more produce and produce can get expensive. So even buying a good juicer from the get go, getting a good juicer that's gonna yield the most from the get go, instead of basically throwing away, as I showed you guys, 300 milliliters of extra juice each time you juice, right? That's definitely no fun. I mean, 300 milliliters, that's like almost eight ounces, right? Well, that's over a cup, over a cup of juice. You're wasted with the highest speed machine. So that's my recommendation, and that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode, me making a mess today, showing you guys how these machines work, explaining them to you, bringing you guys the scientific studies, which the links are down below if you guys want to review them for yourself to see how slow juicers do in fact, as through my science, make more nutrition than those high speed juicers. I would encourage you guys to support me in my work if you guys enjoy this video. It takes a lot for me to put together this video, make it all together, compare the two juicers, run the tests, and do it all for you guys. And if you guys enjoy this, you can support me by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. We currently sell the Shine uh, juicer. I discontinued actually selling all the Breville machines because they're a high speed machine and I'm not a big fan of those because they do lower the nutritional content and they only have a one year warranty. The Shine, you know, more affordable than the Breville, also a three year warranty. I try to sell the best juicers that are time proven that I've actually tested myself that I know are going to be good solid performers for you guys in your kitchen so you guys get the right juice for the first time and not have to get, you know, a juicer that, you know, messes up or that you got to, you know, get another one. All the companies that I work with have good solid uh, warranties and good solid uh, customer service. And if you guys do buy the juicer from me and you do have a problem getting customer service or warranty work from the manufacturer, let me know. And I always have a basically a backdoor method to basically ensure you guys get help and I can help you guys out if you guys purchase from me. So I want to thank you guys in advance who will purchase from me and I want to thank you guys uh, you know, for those of you guys have, that have purchased for me in the past, it is much appreciated and allows me to continue to make these educational videos on YouTube to teach people all about the power of the fruits and the vegetables. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give this a video a thumbs up. Also, be sure to share this video with somebody else you might think it could help. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below. If you like this uh, video, you'll see many upcoming videos I have coming out every three to four days. You never know where I'll show up or you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Make sure to click the little bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. Finally, be sure to check out my past episodes. The past episodes are a wealth of knowledge over 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to teaching you guys and comparing and contrasting all the different juicers and vacuum blenders and even dehydrators 
that are on the market and other products that allow you to eat more fruits and vegetables because they are the healthiest foods on the entire planet. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors. Look, I am.